Okay guys, how's it going? So, the Hero 8 Black. Now this camera's obviously been out for quite a while. There's been a zillion reviews on it. I've never done uh, one myself. Um, but I was out getting some shots the other day and basically I got home and I, I thought some of these shots just really look awful. So it occurred to me to look for a in-depth um, review of all the different settings within the Hero. Uh, and there is a zillion different videos online already in terms of finding the best settings for your GoPro Hero 8. Uh, but they're, I just find them too general and not specific enough for my taste. And I, I just couldn't find what I was looking for. So I just thought, well, I'm just going to do one myself and do the test myself. So uh, this is that video, basically. So what I decided to do, obviously, with the uh, Hero 8, there's a bunch of different um, settings in terms of uh, resolution and frame rate and lens option and stabilization options. Um, there's just a whole different bunch. So when you combine all of those, every different permutation of different types of settings, you end up with a lot of different shots. So that's what I did, basically. I went out and got, um, I think it was getting on for like over 300 different shots, uh, various different settings, various different um, uh, you know, permutations of lens and setting and frame rate and resolution, all the rest of it, to find out what are the sweet spots and what are the kind of spots, um, you know, the bad spots to stay away from. Uh, there's certain combinations that you think would be okay that actually are look terrible and other ones you think oh it's not going to do a good job of that and they're actually not too bad um, so it's not quite as apparent as you first think until you start to actually you know really pixel peep and compare all these different uh, settings so anyway so i mean just so you know i primarily bought this to stick on top of my um fpv quad but i do use it in the ocean quite a lot so there's various different ways i use the hero but i really do want to know what the very best settings are um, anyway so let's get into all of my my shots and all of my um my list and my findings uh, hopefully i can sort of compile it in a way that's going to be useful to you guys if you're going to be really really fussy and you really want to get the very best settings out of the hero 8 black okay let's get on with that okay so let's get into the um the nuts and bolts of all this so first of all i got like I said, literally hundreds of shots to uh, pixel peep and compare everything. Uh, a couple of particular shots that I just got in my back garden that I found very, very useful to compare certain issues um, is this shot here. I basically put the bike in the center of a shot so you could judge detail and sort of resolution and whether it's getting soft or if it's just getting sort of mushy and a lack of detail. And then this roof line here, I find this absolutely perfect to judge um, to see if it's uh, line skipping, if it's throwing information away. And if you end up getting this horrible sort of uh, jaggy effect, which um, makes diagonal lines look like a sort of a staircase rather than a nice smooth um, uh, diagonal line, basically. So yeah, it's a really good indicator of issue. And then obviously the, all this, the, the bushes and the um, the grass and all the rest of it, it's all very useful to help uh, gauge uh, detail. And then also I put some chairs down the side of the garden just to help us sort of understand what the field of view differences are. Um, so yeah, not um, not studio conditions, not uh, lab conditions, but it's, it's perfect for this uh, test, basically. So let's have a look at the chart, and then we'll get into the nuts and bolts of what um, this camera can do and my suggestions for which settings you should choose. So here we go. So this is everything this camera can do. If it's in black on the right-hand side, those are things that the camera cannot do. Everything else that's in grey here, the camera can do. So obviously we have a resolution stand on the side here. We have... 4K 4x3, then we have standard 4K, then we have 2.7K 4x3, then 2.7K, and then 1440, and then 1080. And then we have all the frame rates. Obviously, I've gone through every single different frame rate option this camera has, but just so you know, if you're either in PAL or in your, you're in NTSC, some of these options are not going to show up for you. But basically, don't worry too much. If you're in NTSC, uh, it's basically the same quality as power. It's just it's a different frame rate, but obviously, but the quality level is the same. So don't worry in terms of um, if you know if these facts look confusing or if these frame rates look confusing to you. You're either in power or you're, or you're in NTSC, and so you won't be able to see some of these options. Um, but you don't need to worry about it basically. But I tested all of them basically. So then, if we have combined that frame rate and resolution with a lens option. Now, obviously, some lens options are available in every mode. Some of them are not. Um, Super view tends to only be available in certain resolutions and frame rates, and the same goes for uh, narrow. Um, so that's your options there. So you basically have 
um, super view, wide, linear, and narrow are the four main lens options. And then you can then obviously combine the lens option and the frame rate and the resolution with a different type of stabilization. Uh, and the four modes are, well, essentially one of them is off, so either no stabilization and then the stabilization or hyper smooth turned on. And then you have boost in a few options. And then as you can tell down by the, the right hand side here, there's just six available in high. So in high, there's just uh, six different options of um, stabilization, six different combinations of settings, which will give allow you to add high on basically. So that's everything that the camera can do. So let's have a look at some of my, my results and then we'll move on to some recommendations. So here we go. I've put on a legend here, um, quite simple one. So basically, if it's got a green tick, that's all good. It's worth using. Um, it's either going to be the best in the category or they're just it's generally good image quality and you shouldn't have any, any issues using it whatsoever. So blue is so-so, so the image quality, you are losing a little bit of image quality in that setting compared to some of the other ones around it, but it's still you know worth considering if those particular settings are what, you, what you're after. W, the orange ones, I'm just saying I wouldn't bother. I wouldn't bother using those at all. Um, they do lose a significant amount of image quality. Uh, and yeah, personally, I'm just never going to use those. And then the red cross is absolute dog poop. And I definitely wouldn't recommend using those settings for anything at all because there's a big drop in image quality. And it just, it really just doesn't, does not do a good job of um, capturing what, you know, anything that looks, in my opinion, nice. So as you can tell from here, that it's strange how certain combinations of settings um, suddenly make the image quality much, much worse. For instance, um, the, if we have a look at our 2.7K, 60 or 50 frames per second, and then we look at the, the linear or wide or narrow, if the, the boost and the high, that particular combination of stabilization mode, lens option, frame rate, and resolution just makes the image absolutely dog shit awful. It really is very bad. So I put a big red cross through all of those. Um, and then if we look further down, as you can see, I've just said an, an entire no to the 240 and 200 frames per second uh, Full HD, which is the highest frame rate the, the camera can do. Personally, obviously, some people are going to want the maximum slowdown effect, so they're going to happily use that 200 or 240 frames per second just because they really, really want that slow, slow, slow motion effect. Um, but for me, it's such a significant image quality drop in that mode, I just will never use it again. I had used it a few times for you know kite surfing and bits of action and stuff in the water, uh, and I did get it home and I think this just looks awful. But now I've done the comparisons, I would basically highly recommend choosing the 120 or 100 frames per second in wide or linear, because the image quality of that is far superior than the uh, 200, which obviously makes sense. The higher the frame rate, you expect the quality to get to go down, but it really just, the quality just goes over a cliff at that point, and it just isn't worth using. Um, if we compare things sort of via stabilization category, you'll notice there's very few um, boost boosted hyper smooth settings I would recommend is only basically the the standard 30 or 25 24 uh, wide 4k and then a couple in the uh, 2.7k 4x3 mode for whatever reason the boost significantly drops the quality and and so again does the high there's only two different settings I would recommend using the high stabilization mode generally on or obviously off um, you are getting better image quality uh, from that and then if we have a look at sort of the comparison between the lenses and sort of weigh things up, generally wide, wide view has the best image quality with the least amount of um, softness or sort of, you know, any kind of issues with wide. Uh, obviously, it does have that fisheye view because it's just coming straight out of camera as it as it falls onto the sensor from the, that fisheye lens. Um, but there are quite a few linear modes, which removes that sort of bendy horizon fisheye look, which also look quite nice, but not so many. Certainly narrow, there's not a single narrow I would highly recommend. Narrow is always going to be um, cropping in on the, the image coming off the sensor. You're going to get more image noise, you're going to get it, it lower sharpness. It's just generally not a field of view I would recommend using with a GoPro. It's just not designed for it. So, you know, if you absolutely have to, but I... I'd probably recommend shooting in standard 4K wide and then cropping in post yourself. They just There's no real benefit for, for shooting in a narrow, in my opinion. Uh, it just isn't there. And Superview, again, there's a, a few specific modes that um, Superview just 
kind of really kills the image quality. Um, for instance, in 100, 100 frames per second, 120 frames per second, uh, the super view in that is just really, really crunchy and it gets all sort of jaggy and nasty. It's obviously just a combination of things that the camera just cannot handle, basically. So I wouldn't recommend using super view in in those frame rates in, in full HD. Um, there you go. So let's have a look at uh, a couple more labels I can put on just to help you sort of separate things out a little bit more, hopefully. I've just put on this, this little green uh, label. So this green B is basically saying that is the best in category. So obviously for some people that they don't want to shoot in 4K, they want to have sort of, you know, smaller files or what have you. Um, if I haven't sort of ticked that section, I kind of wanted to put a little green B on just so you know, for each individual section, each combination of, um, you know, resolution and frame rate and lens, those ones that I've put the green B on, they're the best in their category, if that makes sense. So some of these ones I've only put so-so on, on the image quality. Um, if you have to choose those settings, then you choose one of these with the green B on, basically. And as you can see, if you look down the list, it's generally wide and linear. Um, is superior to SuperView. SuperView always loses a little bit of image quality. Um, so anyway, I thought that would help. And then there's two final labels there. I've just put a green smiley face on the 4K 4x3 30, 25, 24 wide, because from my testing, that is the very highest um, image quality available, and that's in stabilization off, basically. So that has the sharpest, nicest image that you can possibly get out of the camera. And if we have a look at the red uh, sad face, which is at uh, 240 frames per second or 200 frames per second in wide, with the stabilization mode on, that is the very, very worst of all of the settings available with the least image quality, the, the worst image quality, I should say. Um, so there you go, that's that's the main chart. I think what I'll do is I'll, I'll pop this as a individual image and I'll put a link to that on the video down below. So those of you, those of you that might wanna be like picking through your settings, um, hopefully this chart will be useful for you. So a couple of recommendations for you from, from on top of that. So for your cinematic beauty shots, this after all my setting and after all my all my my testing and going through all these different settings, um, this is my three main sort of recommendations. So this is to simplify and boil it all down for you into nice simple bite-sized chunks. If you want cinematic beauty shots, so if you're just holding the camera and you're filming something in a beautiful landscape or whatever it is. Um, and you just want to get the best possible quality out, out of the the camera. Um, in an easy mode, I should say, you know, without really thinking too much about the settings, then I would choose this. I would choose the 4K either in 30, 25, or 24 in linear and with stabilization mode on because the stabilization is pretty damn good in the Hero 8, so it's worth it if you're obviously hand holding it or if you're wearing the camera. So I wouldn't suggest that for action, but for sort of you just want to capture a beautiful image and you're not moving around too much, that is the settings I would recommend possibly also go up to 60 or 50 uh, frames per second if you also want to add a little bit of a slow motion effect. But generally for cinematic beauty shots, that is what I recommend um, highlighted in green there. Now let's have a look at fast action slow-mo. So very fast action slow-mo, it's like, you know, skateboarding tricks or, or surfing or for me, kite surfing or something like that. Uh, these are the settings I would recommend. Um, basically 1080, 120 or 100 frames per second in wide or linear with stabilization stabilization turned on, standard on. Um, so that is what I'm going to be using for all of my fast action slow motion shot shots from now on because I found that the best sort of balance between slow motion and image quality. Okay, and lastly, so I bought this particular camera mainly to stick on top of my, my, um, my quad, so my FPV quad. So I think this might be useful for you guys because I've actually flown uh, the Hero 8 with every single different combination of settings on the uh, the quad as well because I wanted to find out if any of the stabilization modes really can you know do a good job in camera stabilization or whether I really do need to use real steady and for my testing it's I kind of knew it already but for my testing the real steady really is a lot better you do lose image quality but the, the stabilization is so smooth and nice it's worth losing the image quality over and what I found with across every single resolution, every single frame rate, I found the best results so far that I've got um, with Real Steady is 2.7K 4x3 in 60 or 50 frames per second with the lens at wide and stabilization mode turned off. 
basically. So that is the very best um, settings that I've found for real steady FPV flying with a Hero 8. If you're flying, if you don't want to deal with real steady, you don't want to pay for it, or you don't want to have an extra sort of processing thing going on, then I'd also recommend um, the 2.7K uh, 50 Superview isn't too bad. Before I started using real steady, that was what I was using for everything. It's not as good as real steady, but it's not too bad. I personally found some issues in linear um, on, on the quad. I found that sometimes the, vib the vibrations from the quad just was a little bit too much for linear to, to handle. But either way, that would be my recommendations for flying uh, your hero on the quad. You know, at, the, at this early stage, bear in mind I've not been flying quads for a long time, so this is just my findings from testing. So I'm, I've, I'm, I'm going to learn more as I go on. Anyway, I think I'll leave that there, guys. So hopefully, um, all my testing is um, useful, and you know, sharing it with you guys might help you sort of avoid a few of these nasty settings that really do do a, a terrible job in the Hero 8, which I was quite surprised by. Um, when, once I was sort of comparing them side by side. And yeah, hopefully it'll help you steer away from some of the worst settings and you won't get so many disappointing shots when you get back home after a day filming. And anyway, there you go guys, I hope that was all useful. It was a lot of comparisons and a lot of filming to come up with these, these answers. Obviously I did it for myself because I couldn't find these answers online. Um, but either way, I thought I'd share it and hopefully they'll be useful for you guys as well. So peace out, and I hope that was useful, and I shall catch you guys soon. Bye-bye.